Hello everybody, I'm the Wasteland Viking and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Last episode we uh, went back to the NTSB warehouse with Shannon and a few other uh, Shadowrunners, I guess, on a on our first official job. I mean, since, you know, the beginning tutorial bit. But we were able to investigate a little bit further than we did before, and had a fight through some more runners that went in there and probably heard about the same thing, about what happened and whatnot, and wanted to get their hands on the prize kind of thing. But we defeated them, we talked to some spirit children with the items that we found previously, and found out more about what happened with Shannon's brother's uh, you know, case and you know, the situation and things like that. Um, and we found blood, uh, a sample of blood from the river. So hopefully we can find somebody to analyze and figure out who it is, maybe we can run them down, you know, chase them down and stuff like that. I don't know what's going on, but my game is running really laggy. Gathered around the intimate back bar, Mrs. Kubota and her coteer gather for breakfast, with the lady herself doing the cooking. The smell of soy calf and something resembling sausages fills the room. What's in these sausages? Yeah. Don't know, cherry bomb. Talk to Mrs. Kubota. Oh, ahoy. Would you like some? Forgive me, oh my, but you look like hell. A uh, long night. Yeah, it's been a really long night. She looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Any run you can, any run you can walk away from is a good run. Helps when the other team doesn't walk away. No one to follow you. I can tell you have been busy, and I can see by the look on your face that there is something you need. Is this about the Ripper? Yep, I found some DNA evidence and need help analyzing it. Cool. That is excellent. I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I am certain someone in the safe house will be able to help you if they are awake. It is likely that you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. Say what? We're going in the Matrix and we're not a, you know, Decker? That's very disappointing. Yeah, thank you. Oh, may I take a sausage? Take the whole plate. Oh, hell yeah. Dwarf, after all, needs some, need my food. Alright. Well, we've got some car 16 karma points to spend. Last time I said I need to be better with spending it, but man. It comes at you so fast sometimes, it's hard to, you know, keep track. But, I said I'm going to increase my intelligence. I mean, I guess we could go into decking a little bit. But uh, we can equip Class A drones, which we haven't found anybody to give us that yet, anyway. So I don't know what to think of it. Always increase hit points. They don't do that. Strength is not even relevant to us. I would like to try to get a different type of drone, because the Smoker drone is not doing as well as I thought it would. I thought it would, like, literally do smoke screen and people can't hit you and shit like that, but it doesn't work like that, apparently. Um, can increase biotech a little bit. Or increase just our drone's ability. Oh, yeah, right, we need that to do that. Um, what does it give them? Plus two armor. Huh. Okay. This 
since they're our main weapon, we probably should. The problem about multi-classing, I guess you could say, is that if I were to go into decking and doing drones as well, I don't know how difficult it'll be to actually keep up with it. Is I mean, I can have two cyber... You know, cyber brains, I guess you could say. Or I have to switch them out or something like that to use one or the other. But, I don't know. Maybe in the future I'll actually play this game again as a decker, but... Let's increase this. Got one more. We'll save it. Yeah, let's confirm that. So we got more hit points. Our intelligence is a lot higher. Better drone control. So we can get Class A drones now, which, like I said, I haven't seen yet. So I don't even know how to go about that. Evening, sir. What's the word around town, Mr. Cluey? There's been more talk of the Ripper killings. Some people are saying they're hate crimes on account of the victims all being human. Well, I mean, we saw in the, you know, flashback, I guess you could say, of the Ripper, and it's this exact same, you know, freaky Nosferatu, you know, looking elf that was at Blind Lucy's crime scene. You know, asking where the body would be taken, you know, that's not suspicious at all, but... Uh, what if I told you the prime suspects were an elf and a troll? Hmm? Still doesn't mean the killings are racially motivated. Eh. Well, I mean, he's a troll himself, so the last bit could have been a little insulting. People are just too quick to label something a hate crime. Check the census. The city is still 66% humans. Close your eyes and throw a rock, you're more than likely to hit a human. Doesn't make it a hate crime. Still a crime, though, and that should be enough. True. I mean, sadly, that's even nowadays. Like, you know, real life and shit. This is the first real rise you've seen out of Mr. Cluey, but he reins himself in with a roll of his thick shoulders and a smothering, oh, a smoothing of his jacket. Don't worry, not gonna start throwing rocks. Wouldn't want to reinforce the stereotype. Sorry, dude, I didn't mean to insult. I'll leave you to your business, sir. Well, thank you, you too. Alright, let's go downstairs. I wonder if Dr. Castle is going to be the one investigating, you know, analyzing the blood. No, she said that we're going to be going into the Matrix. Hmm. It's going to be a fun time. The digital world. Oh, we're going into it right now then, okay. Well, you've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's going to require a trip to cyberspace and back to ID the Ripper. The Matrix, the cybernetic analog of Inside the Grid. The worldwide computer network, a digital world information brought to life. Inside hyperspace, your avatar does all the work while your meat bodies, okay, left behind. All around your avatar are pathways to other nodes filled with data. I see counter ins intrusion programs and other jacked in runners. Cyberspace has many has as many dangers as the meat world and more. Locked doors, security countermeasures, and black IC that can fry a decker's brain. Every movement you make in the matrix can be tracked. If you aren't careful, uh, get tracked if you aren't careful. Get dump shocked out and your brain gets fuzzy for a bit. Get hit by an enemy decker and you can die. Alright. The game's running smoother down here than it was upstairs. I don't get it. Oh. Okay. Van Grass. Hey, can we talk to you about that, uh, stone? I was hoping to get some peace and quiet tonight. You got something for me? I've got a flight recorder. 
wouldn't happen to be an Aries flight recorder, would it? Some very powerful buyers are looking for that right now. I can get rid of it for you for, say, 20%. That leaves 2000 for you. Holy shit, yes. I mean, I ripped myself out from that other, you know, job uh, or that other deal that we could have done. Pleasure doing business with the stones, but... I thought it meant, oh, I'll, I'll think about it as in, hey, I'll think about it, but, you know, we can take care of it later, sort of thing. Or oh, we're going to be doing stuff with Clean, what's his name? Clean Johnny or something like that? Morning, you look like you've been up all night. Sure have. Johnny Clean, that's what it is. You look like you've seen some action, too. Can either of you two do a DNA analysis on a blood sample? Hmm. Doc Castle's equipment isn't really set up for that. I thought it would. It's like top-of-the-line medical facility. However, I could employ a semiconductor chip. It would decode DNA using a voltage change instead of light. That would eliminate the use of highly expensive equipment that would be required otherwise. I just read a journal about it, so the information's still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you want to know about it? The owner's identity. Ugh, oh, that's beyond me. All I can get you is the gene code sequence. But that's where I come in. David, if you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner down via a matrix runner. Will do. Let me have the DNA you want to test. Give Fry the blood sample. Provoke, when David gives me the sequence, I'll check in and help you trace the blood sample back to its source. Thanks guys, if this works, we may find the Emerald City Ripper. No drag? Wake up, Johnny boy. You've got work to do. And Travoke, if you need any gear, I'll be right here. I just got a second wind. Uh, meet you at my rig, Travoke. Alright. Yeah, so his rig is in this room over here. Hmm. Three karma. Increase our strength that we're not going to use. No. I think we are a little above three points at the moment for our stuff. The next thing for sure would have to be five to increase our drone's armor. So I'm speaking of my other drone, the smoker drone. Oh, that's the Doberman. Can I unequip it? Huh, no, I guess... I guess when we get the new one, it will have to, uh, just replace, you know, and stuff like that, so we'll see how that goes. Need some hardware or software? I mean, do you have drones? Actually, no, he just does all cyber decks and programs, things like that. I don't have any of that. Uh, I so wish. Sorry, guys, I, you guys are probably annoyed at the fact I've been saying, hey, I wish I chose Decker. <laughs> but... I mean, it's a truth, but at the same time, this is something new, so it is fun at the same time. Thanks to the semiconductor-based gene sequencing system that David employed, we should have the information we need to track the Ripper in the Matrix. I'm really impressed with his results, considering it was his first attempt. He was utilizing an unproven technique he'd read about in a science journal and he was working from memory on minimal sleep. Uh, I don't know. All of these kind of sound like a snarky kind of way of doing it. But sounds fascinating. If there's time later, maybe you can tell me more about it. Yes, maybe we can sit down with David and he can share his research. But let's stay focused. Yes, indeed. Oh. Yeah, no experience. Oh, that's actually a cool system. I've never... If it was from previous and I when I played it last, I don't remember. I've gone pretty far, but it's so f fuzzy, I don't even know. Here's what I'm thinking. 
We hit the Lone Star DNA database first to see if our donor has a prior criminal record. They have existence, extensive DNA archives. Then we go hunting based on what we find. Let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix. I can get into their private grid easily, but I've got to warn you, once we're in, it could get a little rough. How much decking experience have you had? Uh, jack shit. I don't know anything. I have a trode net here. It's a headband you wear that lets you piggyback me in the matrix. You'll see and hear everything I do. Wow. Yeah, so this is how the decking is set up. So you can have four programs, two ESPs, two evasion, uh, three AP, I guess. It's been a hot minute since I've played the decker as well, so. Killer Love One, a powerful attack program directed at one target doing minus 75 AP damage. Heals yourself or a friendly target for 40 IP. So, yeah, IP is, I mean, it's the hit points in the matrix. I'm sure it's related to like IP addresses and just networking and matrix type shit. So, that does 75 AP damage. Suppression reduces alarm state by four. I think that's four turns or something like that, I don't remember. And Sniffer increases your chance to hit versus enemy IC and Deckers by 50% for three rounds. And ESPs creates an attacker expert system program. Yes, uh, ESPs, expert system programs. I think I went over this earlier on, but what they are is that it's kind of like the equivalent of the shaman and mage fetishes. So that's kind of, it's a consumable and you, you know, have the, you know, familiar something like that with you. Well, yeah, let's confirm, because that's all we got. I love this, and also just the look of it is awesome. I love it. Your synapses light up. Yeah, your synapses light up as you connect your consciousness to the digital world. Although you aren't jacked in like Johnny, the sensation is overwhelming and electrifying. You can only imagine the way it feels for him. Oh. Alright. I completely forgot this is even part of it. So, yeah, and you can move quite a distance as well. I don't remember what that does, but this is his abilities and then the ESPs kind of thing. Hit points, I don't remember, I think this is, oh, right, so whenever you're in, you can unjack. It's, like, it's, it's been a minute since I've done this, so if I, if I suck. Uh, that arc will take us to the next node. Ooh, that music, though. A little groovy. Oh, awesome. The data store ahead is defended by intrusion countermeasures. Yeah, so the enemies are, you know, things like this. All incoming damage minus 25. Alright. So, like everything else, there is cover. It's all, you know, digital and hard. Oh yeah, he has I forgot he has three action points. Uh, yeah, let's put that on you. Luckily they don't really hit very well. The chances of hitting are quite small. So there's like basic attacks as well. I think this red bar down here, when it gets to here, is when an alarm goes off. And uh, even more difficult people show up. I'm guessing, I, I think that's how it goes. I mean, so far it hasn't actually like really increased, so I don't know. 
Because he's buffing every. Well, he's buffing. I wouldn't say everybody, but he's buffing. Nice. And then. Not to worry about some of these other things. Uh, let's not worry about it. Let's actually just attack it. I should have done that extra damage attack, like killer. Oh, I guess. <laughs> could I have actually bought him better stuff? Because he only has, like, level 1 shit. Which, as far as in game, I don't know what his character level is. Well, we have to look here. Oh, yeah, because he's just wearing the thing. Whether working as janitor or a decker, he gets out clean. Boy, I sure the hell hope so. Alright, so he's about, he's experience-wise where he has stuff rel pretty much our level. And they do that on purpose. But yeah, the basic matrix attack, which is uh, an arrow fire that deals 7 to 11 HP of damage. And then as well, cyberware, he's got the data jack. Same as us, but obviously used for different reasons and purposes. I guess it's increasing a little bit. Yes, he is down. Let's see if there's a match for this fingerprint. So I guess it's like whenever you attack people and stuff. DNA match located 100% match. Arrest records database. Subject, Silas Forsberg. That name is very familiar, so that's, yeah. Status, deceased. Bullshit. My profession, chop shop surgical assistant. Uh, priors, breaking and entering two counts. Public indecency, one count. Oh, okay. Brought in for questioning on accusations of unlicensed plastic surgery. No charges were filed. Alright, yeah, we gotta keep moving. Alright, let's, let's save. Do a little quick savey. I mean, if my game will go. Drop to zero FPS. My god, come on. I've never had this problem before, so. Autopsy records. Oh. There are a couple. Okay. Well, the one we can do most damage to, let's just do that right now. Or hit the most. I've got two more hits on the same Silas Horsberg. Gotta hurry. And yeah, I think it's the further you have to actually go in. Wait, did we find out about stuff? Discover the identity of the rover. I mean, I guess we did. Technically, we did. But I think since we're in combat, we can't actually look at the records yet. No cover. For us going to the Lone Star, you know, uh, records and things like that, the alarm hasn't hit yet, so I'm surprised. Packed. Subject, Silas Forksberg. Notes. Subject was found overdosed on half a dozen different sedatives. Several anti-anxiety medications were also found in his system. Face was mutilated, possibly self-inflicted. Identity could not be confirmed immediately due to the disfigurement. Had to check dental records to confirm. No next of kin. I mean, with a life like that, I, w I would be ashamed to be, you know, kin to him. Large puncture wounds were found in several places on the body. Possibly large bore surgical needles. Body had been 
decomposing for several weeks before the landlord noticed the smell and called the police when no one answered the door. Yeah, it does keep getting weirder, my friend. Now what? There's no other node. I don't know. Oh, there are some more. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, there's this one down here. Alright, let's see more about what this crazy dude's about. So, he's supposed to be dead. And there's evidence of him being dead. And, you know, all sorts of messed up. So, I don't know, clone? Uh, some... I... I don't know. Let's do some sniffer stuff. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna... set this up. Alright, that's our attack program. Let's go over here. So it has two action points. It's quite a bit of damage on its own. If things are too big or too small, there's no cover with it. It has to be the perfect type. Oh, I guess that's the network's own ESP. So we do more damage to it when we're, you know, ESP versus ESP. Newsnet 1, return on subject. Silas Forsberg, the body of Silas uh, Forsberg, a chop shop surgical assistant, was found in an apartment in Snohomish uh, earlier this week. The body had been there for as long as a month when Forsberg's landlord noticed a rancid smell and contacted authorities. Lone Star representatives have issued a statement saying Forsberg's death has been ruled a suicide. According to reports, his body, a mass of puncture wounds, and the cause of death was determined to be an overdose of anti-stress medications and sedatives. The man's employer claims he was a dedicated employee, though he suffered from bouts of depression. Forsberg's next of kin cannot be located, but the attorney appointed to his estate has located a will written weeks prior, leaving all of his belongings to his psychiatrist. That's interesting. The identity of the psychiatrist, psychiatrist, wow, I don't know why I said that wrong, uh, has not been released due to privacy concerns. Yet another sad end to a life as if far too common here in the sprawl. Was his boss Dresden? Now that might be something we can go on. Let's regroup in meat space for a bit. Okay. So we have to go back to the beginning and unplug, pretty much. I mean, can you not? I wish you could change camera angle one way or another. So then you could at least like go places, that'd be cool, but. Or just have a better angle of just moving and stuff. Alright, so we came down the western door. Alright, let's head back. Obviously when you, you know, unplug your ESPs and all that's gone. So here's what we know. Our DNA evidence belongs to a dead man whose death was never explained. He worked with Chop Shops, which fits with the living guy that you've met. Yes, Dresden. The Newsnet says he left his estate to his psychiatrist. Maybe finding out who his psychiatrist was will give us our next clue. 
My gut says we can deck into the medical board's records and reverse track, or reverse trace to find this doctor, you in? Um. Give me a minute, let me collect my thoughts. Let's give it a save. Thank you. 